Welcome to another episode. Today I'm going to be talking about random things. I don't really have anything planned. I haven't posted an episode in some time. There's been a lot going on. I'm sure you guys can relate, especially if you train dogs. There is so much happening uh, with day-to-day -day operations of either running a business or being part of a business or working for a business in which you are constantly engaged in working the dogs. So anyways, let's put those excuses aside and now let's get into today's episode. Like I said, I don't really have anything planned, but I am going to make this short and sweet like I aim to do with every episode. And let's talk a little bit about what's been happening. So I've been working on different, uh, different approaches to serve my clients. Okay, different ways to serve. And this is an ongoing this is an ongoing journey. So a little bit of background um, into into what I do. So I, you know, obviously I train dogs. Um, I do a lot of protection work. I have a protection club. So I am very dedicated to that club. I'm very dedicated to my dogs. I have three dogs that I compete with. Um, two of them actively, and you know the other one working towards getting him into competition. My wife is also part of the club. She has her own dog. Uh, we have the club. So we're meeting three times a week. We meet here at my place. And I have the role of the training director, meaning I'm not I'm not in charge of everybody's training. I definitely help out when I when I can, when they ask me for help. But I do my my main role is to have a nice flow of the club so i'm very involved in everybody's training so to speak not that i'm telling them what to do necessarily uh, i do many times i do just because i have a pretty good idea of where their dogs are are at the moment and what they need to and uh, what they need in order to advance for whatever level they're training for so i am very involved but I'm not micromanaging every little thing that they do. But my main role during club is to manage the timing. We have a lot of club members and a handful of us have more than one dog. So there are times where our meetings, we have 18 to 19 dogs. So 18 to 19 dogs. And we work all of the dogs twice. And there is very little to no bullshitting around. It's it's like I have a plan, okay? I, and I make this plan prior to the meeting. I have a pretty good idea who's coming because I, I make the announcement every time we're meeting at this time. Even though everybody knows, I just lay it out there so that people can tell me, okay, they're coming, they're not coming. This gives me a pretty good idea of how many club members I'm going to have in that specific date. On Saturdays, you know, Saturdays are weekends, so people are able to make it a little bit, e a little bit more easily than on the weekdays. So on the weekends, on Saturdays, we have the most number of people. We have like everybody basically shows up, and we end up having like eighteen to nineteen dogs. And I like to run everybody twice. I, I like doing that just because. I like to run my dogs. Sometimes I run my dogs only once so that my club members can run their dogs twice. But I want I want to run my dogs twice as much as I can. And and I know the club members are driving here. Okay, I want them to have two sessions, but they're not just BS sessions. Like so I plan it in such a way that both sessions are very productive. So I'll have like uh, I'll have a pretty good idea of how many dogs are are coming in that day. And then about an hour prior to the meeting, I'll have two post-it notes, color-coded. So one color for first rotation, second color for the next rotation. And then I will go, okay, carjacking. Okay, which ones are the dots I need to work on carjacking? And I'll, and I'll label those. Okay, and then obviously the session will, will, will vary in intensity 
but it's still carjacking. So the young dogs might get a little bit less. The dogs with a PDC are going to get some gunfire. The dogs that are preparing for a PDC are going to get the jug of rocks. The dogs that need hidden sleeve are going to get hidden sleeve. So it's a plan already. Right? So we, we go, okay, so these many dogs, and I'll list them up. Dog this, 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 and this, and this. We're doing carjacking. And get your dogs ready to go. So have one dog just ready on deck. So as the dog comes in, we're working that dog. We're giving that dog a nice session. The other dog should already be standing by. And then we just do this. Now, while that's happening, I'll have an, another list. We'll go, for example, table work. All right, so table work might be for the dogs that are uh, maybe recovering from injury or, or the dogs that are a little bit on the younger side or maybe the dogs that need a little bit more pressure. So I'll have a, a table list. And while that's happening, while the carjacking is taking place, I have, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have really, really good people in our club and I'm very grateful to all of my members for that. So while you know while we're doing carjacking for instance, I'll have a, a one of my club members that I know is a good helper go, okay, um, you know, this person is gonna help you guys with uh with table work. So while we're doing carjacking, you guys are over there doing table work. It's something that I you know I can hand off to a to a, a helper, a club member that I that I know they're gonna do it right. Okay, so while we're doing carjacking with this group of dogs, obviously I jump in the rotation as well. If, if my dog needs carjacking, I'll jump in that rotation as well. I'll have a couple of helpers, and and then I'll have a list of something else. So we'll go okay, and then the you know the more advanced dogs we're gonna do surprise scenarios. So it just makes it go so smooth. And the past couple of weekends, I've been very proud of this. We've had uh, this past weekend, so. Yesterday, as of the recording of this audio, yesterday we had 18 dogs. And same thing, we ran them all twice. We ran all of them twice. And good sessions, good lengthy sessions. They were not just crappy sessions where you show up, you're doing your thing, nobody's paying attention, and then you leave. Really, really good sessions. Um, and we did it in three and a half hours. 18 dogs in three and a half hours. And that's including cleanup. Because afterwards, again, I have such a nice club, such a nice committed group of people that we all clean up. We all help out. And, and it's great. The The weekend before that, we had 19 dogs. Okay, so it seems just like, you know, one more one more dog, what's the difference? But that's that's two whole sessions. So it's quite a bit. Okay, again, it only took us about three and a half hours, and we were out. We were done, and everybody had done it. And it's just such a great, uh, such a great atmosphere to have that nice flow. So that's my biggest role at the club is to go, okay, you, you, and you, we're gonna do this. Um, this is where your dog needs to be, and for the most part, every member goes, yeah, that's exactly what my dog needs. Now, I don't have a problem if a club member goes, well, I would rather do this. Hey, perfectly fine. You can do that as long as it doesn't interfere with the flow of how we're doing things. And if we have to do obedience, which we do also obedience, we don't do one dog at a time. We go you, you, and you. We're all going to do obedience together. Uh, and then we'll have some of the more more experienced members be there to kind of help out and guide the less experienced members and we'll all obviously we'll have helpers, uh, people with suits just sit in there because it is PSA. So even if you are just preparing for a PDC, you your dog needs to get comfortable doing some level of obedience, even with just a helper just sitting down, not doing anything. So that's that's what we do. And it's such a productive meeting every single time. Uh and, and it's great. And I, I just absolutely love the the flow and the people in the club. But anyway, like I was telling you in the very beginning, this is what happens when I don't have a, a specific flow to uh, to what I'm going to be talking about. Just random things come up, but are good things. Okay, so as I'm talking about this, some of you guys might have a protection club, might be part of a club. This is something that you can implement. I've heard of clubs that are less people than what we have that take like six hours just 
it, with less people that are taking like four, five, six hours. Uh, that can certainly be enjoyable if that's what you're into. If you just want to, you know, shoot the shit, hang out, and have a couple of drinks, and have a fire pit, and and enjoy the, the you know each other's companies, that is perfectly fine. Um, I I know that there are people that love that, and that's just great. I don't particularly enjoy that, uh, and a lot of my club members don't enjoy that, and probably would. But if if it takes six hours again, it's just that's just cutting into a lot of of our day. So we have this nice flow which we all really enjoy, right? So again, this is something that I do just to the reason I brought that up is just to kind of let you know that. This is something I'm very involved in. It's not just a hobby for me. It's something that I really enjoy doing, and I'm a little bit, a little bit on the obsessed, not fully obsessed, but a little bit on the obsessed side of it. Um, that that's how much mental energy I put into it. So I have that, um, and then back to what I was talking about. I'm always finding new ways to serve new ways to serve my clients, new ways to serve my club members. You know, how do I make it so that their drive here is worthwhile? I I am in a very remote town. It's, it's a tiny little town. It's called Lamita. Um, so it's Lamita, Texas. It's, it's really, really small. Okay. I'm super small and it's kind of out of the way. So, most of my clients come from Austin. They come from Austin. Uh, some of them come from Dallas. Some of them come from Houston. So my clients are not typically from the surrounding areas. Okay, it's such a small town. It's a very, very small country living people. People literally ride their horses, their horses around the street. I've seen people's horses, people ride their horses to the gas station, which is only one gas station that we have. Okay, so it's such a small town way of thinking that people don't look at their dogs the way a lot of other people do. So the majority of my clientele is not from around here. They're from from the city, from more populated areas. Same thing with my club members. My club members are primarily driving from Austin. So my club members are driving like two hours, you know, one and a half to two hours to get here. And my thought process is always, how do I make that drive worthwhile, whether they're my club members or my clients? How can I serve them best? And that in itself is is an ongoing process. And I've also, you know, I've also only had this business for a couple of years. I'm, ju- I'm just now starting my third year. Uh, the very first year, it was like again a, a couple of da- a couple of years ago. This is year three right now that we're on that we just started a few months ago. So year one of business was when COVID was happening. So that was a that was a bit of a challenging year, but but I made it work. It it it, uh, it was fine. We we didn't we didn't starve. We didn't live on the streets or anything. But it was certainly a bit of a challenging year. Uh, the second year we did much better, which was last year. We did much much better, significantly better, big big difference. And now this year, obviously, I want to do better. Right, so this is still the early stages of the business, and I wanna, I want to always find that extra edge. So that's that's one of the reasons that I've been a little bit absent from the from the podcast. It is something that that does consume a lot of my time, but I do enjoy also giving you guys some you know some episodes, some audio, different perspective. Uh, there are some really good, really, really good episodes in this podcast. Not, I'm not, I'm not patting myself on the back, but there are some some episodes that have a lot of great information. They're very specific to dog training that are uh, that that go into a lot of detail, inform informative, basically, just 100% informative, like like mini lectures. I have 
three episodes on the topic of aggression where I go into a lot of detail. This is stuff that is just on the podcast for free. Anybody can access it. And and I like doing that. You know, I, I'm not charging for that. This is free information. So because there are some really good episodes, I like to continue this podcast. I, I have thought about going, I don't really need to do this anymore. But it is a good way for me to connect with you guys. And there are a handful of you that do listen to it. And I do get messages, a handful of messages with a lot of support. You know, with people that tell me that they're, you know, that that they enjoy my podcast, that they enjoy a certain episode, which obviously reinforces my belief that it is useful. And as long as I can help one person with these recordings, then that's great. The great thing I like about these also is that they're short. I'm not doing two hour podcasts. I'm not, you know, I'm not just floating around into different topics. Like today, for instance, right? Today, I'm, I'm a bit floating around because I don't have a specific topic. But even then, without a specific topic, I was able to give you some value. If you run a protection club, if you're part of a protection club, and you want to minimize a little bit of that extra lag time, unless you enjoy it, okay, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. If you enjoy the, the you know, shooting the shit and, and grilling and laughing with your friends, and having a cold one in between, that is perfectly fine. There are clubs that, that do that, and they do that on purpose. It is absolutely okay if you enjoy that. But if you don't, however, and you want a little bit more a little bit more productivity with the time that you have, so you're not there for six, five, six hours, then my suggestion is come up with a plan ahead of time. This is something that I came up with. I didn't come up with it, rather, but something that I was practicing when I was in Afghanistan. When I was in Afghanistan, I was there for 18 months uh, several years ago, and I was working with the uh, with the explosive detection dogs. I was a trainer there. So as a trainer, I have to train these teams. They have to go through training. They have to maintain records. So training is is something that has to get done. Now imagine doing training when it's 130 degrees which it was. Okay, so we have to be productive. And we had like 18 teams, sometimes more than that. And every day, I'm not joking. We, we didn't even take Sundays off, okay? Literally Monday through Sunday. Every single day. And some weeks were brutal because we'd be so packed with so many handlers. We're bas- basically, I was in a, I was not in a FOB. I was not in a small base. I was in one of the bigger bases in Bagram, and the uh, teams would come through Bagram. Okay, this is for a private company. I didn't work with the military. It was a contract. So the teams would come through Bagram. They would get the training. They would get the, the in-country certification, and then they would go to the FOBs, to the smaller bases in the different areas of that region. And I did that in Bagram, and I also did that in Shindant, which is a different region of, of Afghanistan. So for me to do this as the only trainer there, okay, yes, we had a kennel master, we had a project manager, uh, in-country manager, we had all of that. We had the proper channels, but I was essentially the trainer doing the training sessions for all these teams. And for me to maximize that time, I had to have my list. I had to go, okay, this is what we're doing. It's something you have to do. It's not something that that is like, wow, that's great that you did that. It has to get done that way or nothing gets done, and that's not an option. These teams have to train because they have to maintain training records. So this is something that I picked up there. We have a lot of teams. We only have so much time where we can train, especially when it's incredibly hot over there, and we want to do the bulk of the training in certain certain parts of the day, and Again, we have the list. We have the plan ahead of time. We don't just go and then go, All right, let's see what happens. Let's start training. And and that's what I carry over to, to the club. We go, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. Uh, and it, and it, it works great. So come up with a plan ahead of time and enforce it. Once club starts, you got to get everybody together and go, this is what we're doing. 
Now, when we have less people, so like on Mondays and Wednesdays when we meet, we don't have as many people. Uh, we only have like a few people that show up. Then, then that that definitely makes it easier. So f for for those meetings, we can be a little bit more relaxed. We go, all right, what are you working on? All right, we'll do one dog at a time. And and it just goes very smooth. We uh we still get great training sessions, but it's a little bit of a different speed. Whereas on Saturdays, I have only two options. Either we only just train once, which again I, I particularly not not fond of it. Or um, you know, or we just are there for a very long time, which I'm also not fond of. So the best course of action is we have to have a plan and we have to exercise that plan. But anyway, just wanted to let you know a little bit about what's happening, what I've been doing, what I've been up to, a little bit of good information on, on how to uh, how to run the club. Um, hopefully it's useful. If it's not, obviously don't use it. It doesn't matter. But I was just checking in with you guys. I will see you or you will hear from me on the next episode.